Think of a brilliant mind with limitless potential. And now imagine it's locked in a room, only able to communicate by tapping on the walls. And that's where the most advanced AI of today is, trapped inside a hardware box. And it's time to look at what that box is made of. Let's go back in time and you know, figure out how we got here. So in 1975, the Cray-1, one, one of the greatest supercomputers of all time, delivered 160 million operations per second and had a built-in couch. By the mid 2000s, Intel's Pentium D delivered 13 billion operations per second. And at the same time, GPUs like Nvidia's 7800 GTX hit around 200 billion operations per second. Today, Apple's M4 chip has a neural engine delivering 38 trillion operations per second, and it's the most efficient desktop SOC on the market. It's so efficient that you can now run small language models on your laptop. And AI data centers, the Nvidia B200, now delivers 20 quadrillion operations per second at low precision. And you know this huge increase in computing power is really what has shaped modern AI. So let's put it all together. There's been a dramatic growth in computing in the past five decades from early CPUs, GPUs, to now specialized AI processors. And notice how rapidly these GPUs and accelerators have outpaced traditional CPUs. So how do we get such a steep curve in compute performance? It starts in gaming. GPUs were originally built for rendering video game graphics, where each pixel can be calculated in parallel independently. And it turns out that that structure is perfect for doing neural networks. Well, not too perfect, and we'll see. In 2006, NVIDIA introduced CUDA, allowing GPUs to handle more than just graphics. And by 2012, AlexNet became the first widely recognized deep learning breakthrough powered by GPUs. NVIDIA then spent the next decade investing in AI tooling and infrastructure, laying the foundation for modern AI. The overlap between gaming and AI is something that we call the hardware lottery. It means that progress comes from not is what's perfect, but from what's available. GPUs weren't made for neural nets, but they were accessible and deep learning took off. The accidental head start got us here, but it wasn't built for where AI is going. And as AI scales in size and complexity, general purpose chips are no longer enough. It's time to rethink the whole system. And this means making the silicon leaner and more efficient. So we can use quantization, you know, it's a funny picture here. Uh, quantization, we use it to reduce the size of the numbers that we use in AI. And what we can do is, is we can reduce essentially the quality and the size of numbers, making it easier to do computing and performance, but it's still identifiable, even though it's kind of blurry. But it takes way less space. Now, the trade-off though, in hardware is massively different. So a 32-bit multiplier is over 64 times larger and 60 to 70 times more power hungry than a four-bit multiplier here. It can't even fit on the screen. And you know, by reducing the size of these numbers, we can now reduce the size of these models themselves by four to eight times and make more power efficient and compact AI models. But it's not just about the size of the numbers. When each parameter is smaller, we can move more of them across the system per second. And this decreases bottlenecks across memory and network interconnects. And as powerful as GPUs were, they weren't originally built for AI. So some teams started asking, what would it look like if we designed chips for AI from the ground up? That's me a couple weeks ago at Imagination in Action. I actually got to hold one of these chips and it's the size of the dinner plate. And they take thousands of small cores and put it together on this one size uh, SOC. And they do this essentially to reduce the amount of data movement and power that's required to move data across the chip. And you know, for reference, this wafer scale two takes about the same amount of compute performance as 200 at the time leading A100 GPUs while using 25 kilowatts. Now the GPU cluster uses over 160. Really big power difference. Tens Torrent led by Jim Keller it uses the open RISC-V architecture. And by using more affordable GDDR memory instead of expensive HBM and linking these chips with high bandwidth ethernet, they're able to enable large scale out AI deployments at a fraction of the cost. And they're also doing this while open sourcing their entire software stack. Etched makes ASICs built for only transform models. And if then think about it like this, you can take a flexible city street grid with a lot of different cars, or you can have an F1 track. And if you have an F1 track, that F1 car goes pretty damn fast. San Bonova builds full AI systems from software and hardware for high performance inference. And their systems can actually reconfigure their internal structures for whatever workloads that they have. So eventually silicon will reach its limits and we have to go for different approaches. Photonic computing uses light instead of electrons to reduce resistance and heat. And this enables faster data transfer, higher bandwidth and lower energy use, key for AI. 
MIT-founded Light Matter leads the space with their Invise platform, currently doing 65 trillion operations per second and scaling. Thermodynamic computing uses physical randomness, like noise and thermal motion as a resource, and startups like Normal Computing and Extropic are currently leading the charge with platforms built to harness this randomness. And they're almost ready to launch. And this makes it especially efficient for powering generative models that rely on randomness, like those to create image, audio, and even molecules. So we've talked about the incredible power of single AI chips, but one chip on its own is like an ant. It's impressive, but it's kind of limited. The real breakthroughs come when we scale to massive coordinated swarms. AI supercomputers made of thousands or even millions of chips all working together like an intelligent colony. NVIDIA's NVL72 server cabinet has 72 black hole GPUs and gray CPUs and delivers 1.4 quintillion operations per second in low precision. And these racks were designed to scale into condor clusters of over 20,000 chips, getting 400 quintillion operations per second. It's really crazy. Now, Huawei's Cloud Matrix links 384 Ascend 910B chips, and they're built on the 7 nanometer process versus NVIDIA's 4 nanometer. And these achieve 300 quadrillion operations per second, which beats NVIDIA's NVL72, but specifically in medium precision. And though it has older technology and way lower energy efficiency, with a unified design, high performance is still achievable with smart trade-off. But the next frontier is even bigger. Systems with a million interconnected AI chips, and that's a completely different challenge. When you operate at this scale, fault tolerance becomes a critical issue. Individual component failure becomes constant, and systems need to be able to dynamically reroute, recover, and isolate issues to continue operations in large training runs. XAI's Colossus in Memphis spearheads this charge with 200,000 H100 GPUs and a clear roadmap to over a million. The power that we're unlocking through these AI chips and these advancements has profound implications. And increasingly accessible and globally shared innovation is crucial. At the heart of this revolution lies a supply chain of remarkable complexity. From rare earth minerals mined on one continent to chemicals on another and chip design on a third, all convening on fabs that are the bleeding edge of global engineering. Over a third of all US AI research involves international collaborators and when a single chip might travel 25,000 miles and across 70 borders before it's completed, it's clear that our connectedness isn't optional. It's what makes progress possible. The dawn of AI thrives on our collective strengths and it necessitates a deliberate cooperative design of our algorithms, hardware, and software. And to forge a dynamic computing landscape we need to be able to pass the torch to the next generation of problem solvers, both human and digital. Thank you.